Hi, I'm Jackie Keenan. In Chicago Business Today, banking mess. The news on Chicago's beleaguered banking industry keeps coming and it's almost all bad. The bad loans keep piling up and the failures keep coming. Illinois has had more bank failures than every state except Georgia. Crane's managing editor Brandon Koppel talked with senior reporter Steve Daniels about where all this is headed and what it means for Chicago's business community. So Steve, by my count, there's been roughly 15 bank failures in the Chicago area in the last year. Where are we in the cycle? There's a lot more to come, right? Absolutely, there's a lot more to come. There are many, many more troubled banks than there were at this time last year. Uh, you know, it's impossible to pinpoint a number, but you know, people that are in the business expect 20, 30, 40 more bank failures locally before this is all finished. And can we expect those to mostly be small community banks with just a few branches? Yeah, most of them are going to be banks that most people have never heard of. Uh, little community banks with a couple of branches. A number of them will be specialist banks, real estate banks and the like. But there's some big ones that uh, obviously are in a situation. Yeah. Amcor would be to top the list, the Rockford-based bank that has a, a lot of branches in the suburban Chicago area. Midwest Bank Holdings in Melrose Park is uh, methodically attempting to raise enough capital to stave that off, but there's certainly no assurances there. It's a mixture of, of banks. And let's talk about, you know, capital raising for those those troubled banks. Is it getting any easier? It for for really troubled banks, no. But for for banks that maybe need a little bit to keep them going, uh, but otherwise doing pretty pretty well, yes, I think there is more capital available. In fact, we've seen one severely troubled bank uh, stave off failure and raise capital in, in Bay Tree in, in Lake Forest. Now, of course, of course, that's in Lake Forest. It was in Lake Forest, but nonetheless, uh, a very good sign and a healthy sign that the capital markets are improving is that there is money uh, even for the most troubled of institutions mm -hmm. if the circumstances are right. You mentioned a couple of big names on that watch list. Let's talk about a couple of others that you've written about. Broadway Bank, because it's owned by the family of the uh, Democratic nominee for the U.S. Senate, Alexei G. Nullius. What are the chances that they come out of this? It's going to be real tough. They have a, uh, to raise a lot of money, uh, $75 million or, or more. This is a bank that is 100% is owned by the Giannullius family, has a business model that's different than many community banks. So there's going to be less of a franchise there that an outside investor would be interested in owning. Basically, the family's going to have to put its own money back into the bank in order to save it and you know, only they can answer how much money they've got and what they're prepared to do. Mm -hmm. And then another bank that everybody's keeping an eye on is Shore Bank down on the south side. You've written there may be some help for them coming from the state. What are the chances that they can get it together in time? I think the chances are pretty good, and their situation is terrible. I mean, 20% of their loans are delinquent. It's hard to figure out exactly how much they've got to raise, but it's well over $100 million. But they've got powerful friends and people who are and, and allies. Uh, the state uh, has indicated it's willing to participate in a bailout. The federal government just came up with a program for, for institutions in low-income areas like theirs that potentially could pump $69 million into them if they can raise some private capital alongside. Despite all the odds and the numbers that look terrible, I think their, de their chances are decent. And we've talked about some of the potential losers. Who are the winners? Who's going to uh, come out of this with a much stronger position in the Chicago market? Well, there's a number of uh, mid-sized banks that have had access to the capital markets and have been able to go there repeatedly or, or maybe one time and raise a lot of money. MB Financial uh, would have that list. First Midwest out of Itasca just raised $200 million. Wintrust is in a decent position. First American, which is a pretty good-sized privately held bank in Elk Grove Village, just did a failed bank deal. Those types of banks are going to be well positioned to consolidate market share out of the miseries of their competitors. And when it's all said and done, you're going to have a lot fewer banks in Chicago. Is that going to make it tougher for businesses uh, with fewer banks competing? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we've in Chicago enjoyed a incredible glut of banks. That glut will go away. It's going to mean a more rational banking market, which mm -hmm. short term may not be so great for you, but maybe in the longer term it, it makes more sense. A little to more have stability. A stable banking mm -hmm. okay. industry. All right, Steve, thanks for coming on. Sure. And that's all for this edition of Chicago Business Today. For all of your breaking news throughout the day, be sure to stay with chicagobusiness.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you here on Monday. <laughs>